welcome to Stamford Bridge as Chelsea take on Manchester United as the WSL finally returns from its winter break with big news and some January blues. Sam Kerr out for the season, ACL injury during their warm weather training camp in Morocco. Tough times ahead for the double winners as Kerr is the one that normally makes a difference, just like the last time these two teams met. And Kerr! defeat that day, 2023 was Manchester United's best year yet, but it did end with some of the fans calling for the manager to be sacked. They need a win here today to keep a fingertip grip on the title race. Well, it's all getting very serious for these two. It's first against fourth and kickoff in just over 10 minutes time. Yes, it's never a dull moment in the WSL, even when it's on a break. And never a dull moment when these two are in town. Ellen White, Rachel Brown finished joining me for this one. Look, there's been a lot going on. What Mary Earps picked up every single award going. And then the big news, Ellen White, is Sam Kerr and Chelsea missing them for the rest of the season. The dreaded news no footballer ever wants to hear that she's done her ACL. But I suppose when you look at the title, does that make it a bit closer now? I think if you'd maybe asked me that at the start of the season, I would have said yes. Um, you know, she scored nine goals. Um, she's got a, ma a massive miss. Out of her 58 goals, 21 of them have been match-winning goals. So in that sense, they're going to really miss her. Um, but then you've got to look at the other players now coming in. Lauren James has got a step up now. Uh, my official, even Ag um, Aggie Bieber-Jones. Um, it's it's going to be a tough one, um, but someone's got to step up now. Obviously, you never want to do that injury. She's got great support behind her, but yeah, bitterly, bitterly dis disappointed for, for Sam Kerr. Yeah, and I suppose for Manchester United, Rachel, a lot of heat on their manager, Mark Skinner, Skinner with some of the fans calling at the end of last year for him to be sacked. Is that justified? I think with the what's at stake now in the Women's Super League, and I think we were, you know, 10 years ago, we would have all welcomed this, was the pressure on a manager to perform, a team to perform. With the position that Manchester United were in this time last year, top of the table, vying, you know, on all fronts, yeah. falling away and finishing second behind Chelsea, just two points in it in the end, that's the standards that the benchmark the Mark's going to set. They've fallen behind that, and they've seen other teams progress, build better, bigger squads, and they've seen some of their favourite players like Simona Bagé move on to uh, to other teams. I think that's where the unrest is. Pressure's certainly on for Mark Skinner's team, though. OK, well, let's bring you up to date with some of the team news today, because Chelsea have made five changes to the starting lineup. The game against West Ham last week in the fourth round of the FA Cup that they managed to win. Hannah Hampton starts in goal. Mia Official is leading the line for Chelsea. Maybe some surprising news. Frank Kirby is starting on the bench for the Blues today. Well, aiming to stop me official is Mary Ertz from Manchester United, who picked up the FIFA Best Goalkeeper of the Year award this week, following on from winning BBC Sports Personality of the Year over the Christmas break. Well, let's get you over to the Chelsea boss, Emma Hayes, who's been speaking to Joe Curry about her selection up front today. Sam Kerr unavailable, Mia Fischel leads the line today. How much is she relishing the prospect of potentially making that number nine role her own? Yeah, I mean, it's, she's got her opportunity, that's for sure. And she has to play to her strengths. And Mia can hold the ball up very well. And I think her and Lauren James, they link quite naturally. So it's important for them to establish that relationship. They did in the second half of the game last week, and they've got to build on that. Hannah Hampton starts in goal today after making her debut just before Christmas. Is this a sign that the number one goalkeeper shirt is up for grabs at the moment? I, you know, I, I view very much, you know, every player in our squad is vying for a place in the team. But there's no question a distribution from the deepest spaces against a really aggressive pressing team uh, will be vital for us. And she's been training unbelievably well. Again, all three of them are good to start, but today I chose Hannah. Thanks, Emma. Best of luck. Thanks. Thank 
OK, the questions have been answered. It's me official leading the line for the Blues. Grew up a Chelsea fan in San Diego. What qualities have you seen from her so far, Ellen? I think I'll just echo what Emma said. She holds the ball up really well. She's got great aerial ability. And I think, you know, I really like this goal against West Ham last week. Just the way she used her body and what a finish that is. It's unbelievable. I'd love to see some of that for uh, today, please. And this was her debut uh, against Tottenham. Just the way that she was able to create that little bit of space in the box just to nod that into the bottom um, corner. So I think she'll be a really exciting prospect for Chelsea and something a bit different. And um, Rachel, I've got to come to you on your thoughts on the selection of Hannah Hampton in goal for Chelsea. As Emma Hayes said, there's no there's no drop in standard when uh, with either of these three goalkeepers, in my opinion. But one of the fortes of Hannah Hampton is her uh, ability and a, a comfortable uh, how comfortable she is with the ball at her feet. Now, whether that's in possession and starting attacks from the back, playing out from the back, or whether that's under pressure, the ball being played back, I think it's probably the former more than anything. United, I expect, to start highly a goal and Jay-Z, Lucia Garcia, high up and try and win the ball in dangerous areas. Well, as you can see, the Chelsea fans are already loving it. And that's the thing. They've got loads of different selection, loads of stars on um, show that they are expecting to see today and put on entertainment. And actually, one of those players is Norwegian star Guru Raiten, who has been loading the bullets for the Chelsea strike force over the last couple of seasons. She sat down with Joe Curry this week for a chat. Back at the bridge, does this place still give you goosebumps or does it very much feel like home now? It gives me goosebumps, especially with a lot of fans in the stadium. We love playing in front of as many fans as possible. Kings Meadow is home, it's because we used to play there and the atmosphere is unbelievable, but hopefully we can keep building a crowd and, and getting more people here and then maybe this one time will feel like home as well. You know going forwards for the rest of the season you're now not going to have Sam Kerr after she did her ACL. Yeah. When it happened, as a group of players, did you know straight away it was going to be a bad one? Yeah. Yeah, we did. It happened during training um, and we found out a couple of hours later. Uh, Sam's a very good friend. It's hard just because I know how much she wanted to play this season and the Olympics and everything. And with an injury like that, it's, it's going to be a tough road, but we're going to be there for her. What kind of a patient is she going to be? Oh, she's going to be a nightmare for the physios. <laughs> and they already know that. She's going to be impatient for sure. For us now, someone else needs to come in as the striker and everyone needs to step up. Someone like me, official, mm -hmm. new to the team this year, how's mm -hmm. she doing? Oh, she's well. I think, you know, coming into a new team takes time and she's getting better every, every session, learning more about who she's playing with and us playing with her. She's different. She's very good in the box. And yeah, she's just got to take it, take the opportunity. This year, though, you've had Millie Bright out for a large amount of time. You've had time sidelined. Sam's now out to the end of the season. You know that Emma's leaving at the end of the season. Does it just feel like the challenges keep on coming at the moment? You know, we just got to face every challenge that's been thrown at us and dig deep because, yes, we, we have been winning, but it's not been pretty every game for the last four and a half years that I've been here. There have been some tough moments, but we've always found, uh, found our way and that's what we're going to try and do to you this year as well. Yeah, Guru right in providing the most assists in the WSL last season. Well, that's the, the blue corner side of things. Let's get over to the red side now and hear from the Manchester United boss, Mark Skinner. League titles tend to come down to fine margins. If you lost today, you'd be 10 points behind Chelsea. Where would that then leave your title hopes? Uh, obviously, that's not something we want to do today. So we're, uh, we're aiming to try and win the game. After that, we can only do that. So whatever happens after the game, we'll deal with. But what we have to do is put our energy into win, trying to win the game because Chelsea are the champions and we're at their home ground. So it's not an easy game, but we have to be ready to commit everything today. And if we do that, I believe in our team to win the game. As, as difficult as it is, I believe that we can do that. So 
We'll, uh, we'll assess it as it comes, but all my energy goes into preparing the team to win rather than worrying about what comes afterwards. Mark Skinner saying he needs to commit, his team needs to commit everything today. What do they need to do to stop the reigning champions? They need to have a flawless performance. They need to be high pressing, they need to move the ball quickly and they need to take their chances. I don't know if they're going to get many today, so they need to be very clinical in front of goal. It's going to be a tough one against Chelsea today. They're going to be leaning on Mary Epps as they have done and continue, will continue to do so as long as Mary Epps stays at Manchester United. They'll have a good strong following, but it's about big players performing on the big occasion today. It's going to be a tough one though, because Chelsea, the only WSL team that Manchester United have never beaten, Ellen. No, and I don't know if that's going to be, you know, something that the, the Manchester United players are going to be thinking about, but they just need to put that to the one side, they need to focus on this game, and they need three points today to be in a shout of getting a Champions League spot. Is it hard for the Manchester United players, Rachel? Like you said, last year, the season that they had, runners-up, appearing at Wembley in a cup final, to actually reproduce that standard? I think Mark Skinner is all about the present, and he'll be relaying that message to his players. Those players who had last season, that's a great experience for them to have had about flying high and being top, but about the present, the right here, they are right now. And history is made to be broken. Today, Manchester United want to break. OK, well, it's going to be an intriguing game. And if you're wondering where Farrah Williams is today, don't worry, we've found her a seat alongside Robin Cowan. Thank you, Alex. Don't worry, she's been taken care of up here. Good afternoon, everyone. The WSL is back after the winter break, but no time to ease yourselves back into this one. Champions Chelsea must defend their title without their main goal scorer. They begin live post Sam Kerr against the Manchester United side off the pace and in danger of falling away from the top three. To keep in touch, the Reds must do something they have never done before, beat the Blues. Five changes from the side that needed extra time to win against West Ham in the FA Cup. Hannah Hampton makes just her second WSL appearance for Chelsea. There's a full debut for Natalie Bjorn of January signing from Everton. Neve Charles also returns from suspension. Melanie Leupold makes just her second start since October. And Mia Fischel, who got the goal scoring going against the Hammers, leads the line. Just the one change from the United team that had a comfortable win over Newcastle. Leah Golton comes in for Nikita Paris, who drops to the bench. Ella Toon has found her form, scoring three in her last four in all competitions. Lucia Garcia makes her first league start since October. And Hannah Blundell comes up against the team, where she won eight major trophies. Farrah Williams will players to watch, starting with the player tasked with filling the sizeable shoes of the injured Sam Kerr. Yeah, official for Chelsea. Of course, with the injury to Sam Kerr, Chelsea are going to look for somebody to replace her. They're going to need a goal scorer. They know the importance that Sam Kerr has brought to this Chelsea team over the years. But I think what official has got to do is play her own game. What she can't do is be compared to Sam Kerr. They're completely different players. You know, it's a debut season for official. So she has to find her feet within this team, find her connection. We heard Emma Hayes talking about her connection with Lauren James. And let's see if they can get that going in this game today. For Manchester United, a player who's yet to really catch fire, but we know she can, Chase. Yeah, fantastic player, Chase. One that, I, you know, I really like watching. I think for her, she needs to now have better contributions in this team. You know, as it, when it comes down to assists and scoring goals, I don't feel she's got enough for the team and she's not impact in that way. She has a big impact in and around, the, you know, general play for this Man United team, but the areas they really need her to her opposition, she's not quite doing. So I think with a vulnerable Chelsea back line today, this could be a day for Chase. Abigail Byrne is the referee today. Emma Hayes, every single game, counting down to her last one as Chelsea boss, as she will vacate the managerial position for Chelsea for the coach of the United States women's national team. And they're facing another big bit of adversity to keep hold of their title. New Year, but the same message from both sets of players who take the knee. Here we go, Chelsea get us underway. They are currently on a 20-match winning streak at home. It is encompassed here at Stamford Bridge and at their regular home of King's Meadow. 
high stakes game, pressure on both sides, Farah, for slightly different reasons. Yeah, for sure. Chelsea will obviously they put themselves in a good position at the end of 2023, putting themselves top of the league. They'll want to continue that into 24. They didn't start too well in the FA Cup game last weekend against West Ham, as we've seen. And as for Man United, they haven't started the season too well. They haven't been able to get that consistency and pick up the points. But a chance here for Chelsea with a corner and something for United to defend. Lauren James getting the treatment. Fans of her former side, Manchester United, who she joined Chelsea from three years ago. Ashley Lawrence being forced into a slightly awkward position, forced all the way back to Hannah Hampton. A very good WSL debut against Bristol City, made some notable contributions. Managed to work it to Riviere. Now Ladd. Trying to shrug off Erin Cuthbert. Easier said than done, but she's done really well there. Through the legs of Cuthbert to find Jace. You can already see in this Man United team, Jace and Garcia, the interchange there on his right hand side to central position. They're playing quite close. I think they're probably doing that because they actually know this Chelsea back line is really vulnerable. It's a new back line and they're probably going to be testing that in his opening minutes. Chelsea are at the most vulnerable early on in games. They've conceded the majority of their goals in the opening 15 minutes. It doesn't surprise me this season given the amount of injuries they've had in their back line and had to make you know numerous amount of changes. and challenged by Letizia. She was screaming for it, Guru Wrighton. Lerpoles and acres of space for Ashley Lawrence. Blundell scuttling across, across to try and slow her down. And Blundell has done enough, but it is a corner. It was too easy for Chelsea to get out and get the switch on the opposite side of the pitch, but I'm really looking forward to this matchup actually with uh, Lawrence out there and Hannah Blundell. Two very good attack minding fullbacks, you know, very athletic and bags of talent. So this is an exciting one to look out for. Who right in to take this one? Second call already for Chelsea. Flick towards goal. Charles battling for it. It's still there for Chelsea. Leopold takes a swing and over the top in the end. It's a good delivery from Chelsea into a good area. Beyond obviously being the target for Chelsea in the absence of Millie Bright, but they keep it alive and manage to get a shot away here. Man United do really well to, to block chances. And then obviously the follow-up there from beyond centre-half strike that was from the edge of the box. One WSL goal this season for Natalie Bjorn for Everton against Aston Villa. Picked up by Cuthbert and again, too easy. Canarid is in on goal here. It's Canarid. Slowed down by Blundell. Tries to play in Guru Wrighton. Canarid. James. One <laughs> Chelsea had multiple chances to take the lead in that action alone. And it's Lauren James against her former club who applies the finishing touch and gives Chelsea an early advantage. Yeah, and the composure Chelsea shown inside the Manchester United box. You can see it here. It's too easy for Manchester United down Chelsea. Sorry, sorry, Chelsea down Manchester United left hand side. It's kind of a cheat. Does really well to, to 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 slow herself down, find her teammate. You fall here. The opportunity was missed for the strike, but what an assist it was for Lauren James to just pass into the back of the net. It's fantastic from Chelsea and really good composure in front of goal. Lauren James with her eighth goal of the season. It's already her best return in the WSL. And she runs straight to the opposition fans. And I think she did that for the abuse she got moments before from the Manchester United fans when she was taking a corner. 
United still asleep here. Riviere concedes the corner. There's too much space for Chelsea in the wide areas of Manchester United. It's something they're going to have to look at really early Manchester United because they can't afford for this to keep happening. Chelsea have barely had to break sweats to break down this United side. Cuthbert. The ominous statistic from a United point of view. Chelsea unbeaten in their last 26 WSL matches when they've taken the lead. That's why they are where they are in the league. And, 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 you know, they've had that much success over the years. I think they know how to manage games. Certainly when they take that lead, you can see a few of the players telling the goalkeeper, Hannah Hampton, you know, calm it down, let's take control. And they're dictate the, the tempo of the game. One back by Riviere. Jace didn't have enough time to take the ball under her control. Buchanan into Fischl, lovely ball. First touch from Canary just takes it away from herself. Collected nicely by Fischl. Lad will try and calm things down for United. Lost their last WSL game before the break. United against Liverpool. Got back on track in the FA Cup. But as mentioned in the build-up to this, if they lose today, they will be 10 points off the top. Yeah, and I think at this stage of the season, if you go that many points behind, you know, the leaders in the league, then, you know, it's a really hard gap to close come the end of the season. So it'll be difficult. United need something from this game for sure. Buchanan to Canarid. Bjorn looks really comfortable. I'm just watching. It's, it's difficult to step into a new team. Of, of course, Bjorn is very aware and familiar with the WSL, but she looks really comfortable in, in the build phase for Chelsea. That's important to point out, isn't it? All the talk's been about Sam Kerr, but Chelsea have been missing Millie Bright for much of this season. Emma Hayes clearly felt she had to replace her. Here's Lauren James surging through once again, drags it wide this time. Mary Earps not happy at all. I just think United, Manchester United, they look a little bit of a yard off. You know, Chelsea are quite comfortable keeping possession and finding pockets. And you can see here, Lauren James is free in the middle of the park. This is one player you don't want to be available to receive a ball in those areas because she can create all kinds of problems. So, yeah, Mary Earps has every right to be, you know, annoyed at her teammates in front of her. They have to make sure they, you know, get closer to Lauren James. Chase. Can't quite find Lucia Garcia. And Emma Hayes. 201st WSL game in charge of Chelsea. Most wins, most games, most trophies in the WSL era. Buchanan, a little bit careless. I think that's, you can get that with Buchanan sometimes, and it's so frustrating, a player of real good quality, you know, Champions League winner with Leon, and the quality she has on the ball, but sometimes she has those moments where she just lacks concentration and gives possession away. Garcia. Good play from Letizia. Ella Toon's made her way into the area there. Good, solid defending from Buchanan. Picked up by Galton. 
finds two. Nice feet, it's Zellum. Well, the is a real promise there from Manchester United. Yeah, and it was good movement from Melatoon. She, she, she tries to work the back shoulder of Buchanan from the cross that comes in. Buchanan actually does really well. Here you can see, you know, Elatoon in a good position here, really good feet, and, and sets her teammate Katie Zellum on the edge of the box, but the execution, Zellum was just leaning back too much, and of course it's going to go up and over the bar when you have, you know, that type of technique. The best United have shown, though. Neve Charles, captain's armband today. It's away from Riviere. Now Fischl. James. They look really good, Chelsea. This is probably, you know, in possession, probably the most composed I've seen them. They look really in control. They're not forcing passes. You know, if they need to get it out the other side, they're making that extra pass to get it there. So it's, you know, so they're tidy in their possession. And they look really good, really composed. And Man United are struggling to get anywhere near them at the moment. Strong play from Fischl. Leopold's. And they're away again. Canarit. Lawrence on the overlap. Good defending from Leah Galton. Yes, a lot was made of the struggle that they had against West Ham United last week in the FA Cup, needing extra time. West Ham United were sitting very deep in a, in a low block, frustrating them. Defending a, a goal advantage is very different. I think it's always difficult when you've had a, a winter break like we do in the women's game. I think when you come back from that, whether it be a cup game or a league game, it is really difficult to get up to the speed of things. You know, it's like a, the start of a season after coming off the back of a long pre-season. So it's always difficult. As a player, it was difficult. And you could see that in Chelsea. They looked like they hadn't played in a while. But today, they look the complete opposite to that. Wrighton. Liverpool's into Fischl. You see what she was trying to do there. To lay it off for Wrighton. Every first contact, second contact, Chelsea are just onto it. Manchester United need to try and get the ball and, you know, try and retain a little bit of possession. to release Kanarid. Pulls it back. It's actually really good play. This give and go here with Lauren James. Kanarid gets the better of Blundell. Does really well to break into the box and then it's just a decision making. Fischl just got ahead of the ball. It could have been either or in terms of the pass she made and chose the wrong pass. But again, a really another good chance for Chelsea down the wide areas. Charles, first time onto Wrighton. Tissier clears up. No pressure on the ball though. Chances taken from Hampton. Chelsea 
Chelsea coming to this level on points with Arsenal, who played yesterday. Narrow win over Everton. So we'll go three points clear once again, Chelsea, with a win today. Booming clearances from the goalkeepers. Turner gets there first, but it's picked up by Cuthbert. Leopolds. Wrighton, James. And now Charles. Cuthbert. Snatched that a little bit, had more time. She did here again. Look, it's down the outside of, of Manchester United fullback. Ch James gets, a, uh, sorry, Charles gets a really good cross in. Half cleared from Manchester United and it's Evan Cuff, but normally from this distance you'd favour her to hit the target. And, and as you mentioned, the connection wasn't right, and she hits it wide. I think that'll be the only frustration so far for Emma Hayes. They could be a lot further ahead. Could and should be a couple of goals up. Garcia and put the United defence under a bit of pressure. Good strength from Charles, who felt that she should have got the decision there. Yeah, she did well. She was waiting for the foul. Obviously, the referees allowed play to, to go on. And the right decision for me in the end. Buchanan. Loose pass. United can't really take advantage. Lad. Cuthbert first to it. Finding it really difficult, Manchester United. They can't get any of their attacking players into the game. The attacking players, the front four that you can see when Emma Toon joins the front line, they can't seem to get on the ball. And when they do, this happens, and you know, they're a little bit sloppy, a little bit of frustration. Show support from the Chelsea. And that goes for every fan of the women's game in particular. We're not going to see her for a while, certainly not this season. Just another piece of motivation, though, for Chelsea. First of all, Emma Hayes last season and now doing it for Sam Kerr. Yeah, for sure, you never want to see players, you know, pick up an injury, and certainly not the ACL. That we've seen for a long, a long time now. Sorry, it was just an offside. I didn't want to talk over the offside, but yeah, it's an injury that we've seen too many of in the women's game. And uh, you know, we've seen Vivian Mead and Beth Mead come out with a documentary talking about it, and you know, trying to find ways of, you know, certainly limiting those ACL injuries. But she'll be a big miss, and she's out of contract at the end of the season. Might that force her into, you know, staying at Chelsea for for another couple of years? I hope so. Canaris. Can't quite pick out official. Herbs goes long towards Lat. on that one for Wrighton. Mary Earps, MBE. MBE, FIFA World Player, Goalkeeper of the Year. 
BBC Player of the Year. I mean, Golden Glove. How many more to name? World Eleven, is it? There's so many, and, and she's had a fantastic, not just 2023, I think 2022. You know, two years on the bounce, she's been phenomenal for Manchester United and the Lionesses. forward by James. Well, Mary Earps came, but uh, in the end it's paid off because now Riviere has a bit of space to run into. Chase, just not strong enough. Snapping at the heels of Erin Cuthbert. Not many beat Erin Cuthbert in a 1v1 one, one duel. <laughs> Unbelievable player, you know, for somebody so small, great strength. She's just shown that there. Really good. Going back to the chance there for uh, official from the pass from Lauren James. I think Millie Turner does actually really well. You know, Mary Earps was indecisive, and you know, Millie, Millie Turner took the responsibility to defend. You know, what was the danger and, and done really well and helped Man United get out. Now Buchanan's done well there. A little trip relieves a little bit of pressure. Well, you just see here, steps in Buchanan and Chase just trips her over. Lovely ball over the top, it's James! Majestic from James. Chelsea double their lead. It's a fantastic finish, by the way, from Lauren James there. It's, it's a long, direct ball. We'll see the replay now. It comes from one ball. I think Millie, uh, Mary Earps is indecisive. It's beyond. Fantastic ball beyond the Manchester United back line. And Lauren James, the first time, just hits it hard and low. Um, initially, I thought Mary Earps maybe could have come out. But... By the time she made the decision was too too late and then obviously hasn't set herself for the strike here from Lauren James but does really well head over it executes it really well and Lauren James loves playing at Stamford Bridge that's for sure because when she's here you're guaranteed a goal. Hattrick the last game in the WSL here against Liverpool and she's already two-thirds of the way there. And that was the word for it execution you just knew it would have been a shock had she missed that. Yeah, and she's so talented, uh, you know, her technical ability, you know, is second to none. And the way she just allowed the ball to come down before she hit, she got, you know, got her head over it and body position was all right and it was difficult for Mary Earps to save it, but Mary Earps wasn't set. She was indecisive in whether to come for the ball or to stay on her line. She didn't either, so it was more difficult for her to make the save. United haven't had a kick can't get the ball they can't get the ball I'm trying to work out you know are they are they trying to play long ball second ball game are they trying to play through the third I actually can't work it out at the moment they haven't had long enough on the ball to recognize that no pressure on the ball from Bjorn and Blundell was running back towards her own goal. Take nothing away from the finish. The finish was, was phenomenal, but the, I, I, I spoke and beyond, I think she's, you know, she's really settled into this Chelsea team, you know, for a debut in the WSL for her, for this Chelsea team. I think she looks really comfortable, like she's been here a long time, and it was her that found that long pass into Lauren James beyond the Manchester United back line. Blundell. Garcia's in a bit of space, if Blundell can find her. She can, but it's slightly behind her. Chase. Still in. Cuthbert, 
there's that ball again. This time for official. Side flag is up, but that does seem to be something that Chelsea are doing regularly. I think they have the option now. I think with Fischl, I think, you know, she can run beyond the, the line. She likes the stretch play, but she's also big and strong and somebody that you can, you know, if you need to beat a line, which often, you know, Chelsea do when teams press them, she's able to hold the ball up and bring her teammates into the game. His tune. Oh, that's in a bit of space now. Blundell. <laughs> Telegraph that. And a promising moment disappears. Yeah, they do well, Manchester United, to get down that left-hand side and get Hannah Blundell in a, you know, advanced position, which she hasn't been able to get herself to. But it, it's the cost, the, the, you know, the execution of the cost just wasn't there for Manchester United. Zellum, fortunate for the bounce of the ball, comes straight back to her. She's once again waiting for the ball to come to her. Just on her heels. She seems to be on her heels. She's not ready. She's not waiting. Sorry, she's not alert to the ball coming in. Her movement is just, it's just very flat. And then the frustration comes when, you know, defenders come and nick from behind. And Man United have spoken, you know, they haven't been able to get hold of the ball. I think it's 69% possession to Chelsea at the moment in this game. And rarely have you seen teams play against Manchester United and dominate that much amount of possession. United also without notable injuries. Miyazawa, Gabby George, another one who's recovered from an ACL injury, started the season so brightly with Manchester United. I think Gabby George is a big miss because naturally she'll play at left back and Hannah Blundell can play at right back and it's more balanced. But Miyazawa didn't quite hasn't quite settled in this Man United team and you know was having few opportunities to really impact the team. So they probably don't miss her as much as they do Gabby George. But certainly it's an option in terms of now if they need to change the game, a player like that to come off the bench would and be a great option. Should mention Mallard as well, out of the squad today, with just a minor injury, we're told, but the player who can make a big impact is Riviere. Assessing her options. Blundell. Well, that's a good-looking ball, but you can't see it. He is offside, and Hampton was decisive off her line quickly. And that might be an option for, for Manchester United. If they can't get the ball into the feet of their strikers here, it's, it's really good movement. She just, Garcia needs to check a little bit more. I think she goes too early, the ball comes a little bit too late, and, you know, she just runs herself offside. But it's an option, an option to try and get beyond the Chelsea line, because actually they, they can't get the ball to feet at the minute. And given away. Chelsea charge forward, Blundell stops the momentum. Charles, he retrieved by Lauren James. Leopold's Charles! Side netting. It's too easy for Chelsea. Too easy. I've said it, you know, this opening 30 minutes. Too easy for Chelsea to get down the sides of this Man United team. And you can see it here. Simple ball through. Really good delivery here to the back post. And Charles has to do better. She has to hit the target. She's blindside run at the back post and makes good connection. But she has to hit the target from there. A big opportunity there missed from Chelsea. Half an hour played. Apart from a few flickers, 
from Manchester United. No real evidence of the tide turning so far. Still a long way to go. The only way I see Manchester United scoring is if Chelsea make a mistake and give them give give position, uh, possession to them because apart from that they haven't looked like you know they they're, they're going to get in behind this Chelsea back line in any way whether that be down the sides whether that be in between the lines whether that be shots from distance they just haven't been able to do it. Head injury for Katie Zellum. Was caught. Need of treatment. Hopefully, she'll be okay to continue. But don't forget the women's football show tonight, 11:15 on BBC One. Right after match of the day two, 10 o'clock on the red button. If that uh, helps the slightly earlier time. And next in the WSL from us, Everton against Leicester Sunday, 12:15 on the iPlayer or the red button. Katie Zellum just shake that one off. Hoping for around 20,000 today. Thankfully, the temperature has risen slightly for the last few days. It's quite nice. I actually quite like that I don't have to have my long sleeping bag on uh, to come to the game. So, yeah, the weather's quite nice. A little bit breezy, but, you know, nice conditions for the players to play in. Just bring the sleeping bag in case I bore you too much. <laughs> that as well. <laughs> Never, Robin. <laughs> that break in play might have helped United a little bit. Manchester United, I think, gives Mark Skinner an opportunity to give some instructions to his team. And, you know, with 15 minutes remaining before the half, it might be crucial information for them. It's an animated conversation between captain and coach. Cuthbert doesn't get that one quite right. Tissier striding out, finding Riviere. Tries to go early for Jace. Foul by Zellum on Wrighton. The wire in uh, the gantry here just nearly fouled me as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll restart here as well. <laughs> Canerid, lovely one two with James. Turner sliding in clears the danger for now. That combination has been far too easy for Chelsea to get in down their right-hand side and obviously Manchester United left. I think Golden or maybe even Katie Zellum can help Hannah Blundell out in those full-back areas. She's overloaded, you know, on every opportunity when Chelsea get into that final third, mid-third, she's just overloaded with Chelsea players. It's really difficult for her to defend. Oh, is that a foul throw? I haven't seen one of them in a while. Lesser spotted. <laughs> Easy possession given back to Manchester United. Galton flicks it on. Slightly careless. Here goes Jace. Finds Ladd. Immediately closed down by Wrighton. Zellum, too much on it. Oh, and Hannah Hampton. Makes a bit of a meal of that, but eventually clears her lines. It's Millie Turner. Chelsea having a bit of a breather, it seems. Ten minutes still to play until the break. Blundell. 
like a push on Kanarit. See here, Kanarit just gets her body in front of Hannah Brundell and the ball. And in doing that, Hannah Brundell obviously catches her feet and gives away a really cheap free kick. Is Zellen. Well, not the ball that Golton would have wanted, but Cuthbert can. Uh, Bjorn can keep hold of it. Chase! Oh! Flying Hannah Hampton. Had to do something. And it's a corner kick for Manchester United, their first of the game after 36 minutes. She does well, Chase, when it, you know it's a scruffy clearance there from Bjorn. She manages to get herself a yard and put a ball into a danger area. I wasn't too sure why if Hannah Hampton needed to make the save, but on the replay you can see that it was on target and it's actually a good save from Hampton. It's an opportunity though for Manchester United now with a corner, a set piece. Zellen. Away by Wrighton. Blundell just about keeps that in. Riviere forced into a hurried clearance. Has been just a couple of mistakes, isn't there, from Chelsea that have threatened to give United a sniff. Yeah, and that's at the back. They've, you know, at times with so much time, you know, be, being a little bit sloppy. Buchanan's, you know, somebody that's given the ball away a couple of times, but Chelsea have been able to deal with those mistakes quite easily because Man United just don't seem at the races. changes this would represent their third defeat of the season the WSL Manchester United they only lost two in the entirety of the last campaign both of them to Chelsea incidentally Leopold's official Canerid ghosting in at the back post Lawrence away by Garcia just no urgency for Manchester United. Whether that be to press and try and win the ball back, whether when they're in possession, speed of play, trying to be tidy, try and get some passes. I'm not seeing anything from them, you know, to try and help them change the momentum and shift the momentum of the game. Golton, that's good play. Away from Lawrence, who has touched tight. Jace trying to get around Buchanan. Appeals for fouls, but gone unheard. Here's Ladd. Garcia, this could be the opportunity. Straight at Hannah Hampton. Buchanan has to be better with, with the ball. She has to be. We can't, you know, you know, and a teammate should be making her aware of that. She can't keep giving possession away as cheaply as she, ha she has been without anybody saying anything to her. If I was on her team, she, you know, I'd be getting into her. You have to. It's not acceptable. You're under no pressure to give possession away in, in, in you know, in danger areas for Chelsea. It's the earlier intervention from Hannah Hampton, who's just starting to be called into action as we enter the final stage of the first half. One of three goalkeepers. The Chelsea squad and Katrin Berger, Zeshira Musevic as well. Emma Hayes likes a collection, doesn't she? Three top quality goalkeepers, and if Chelsea have got them, you know, three of them, there'll be two that won't be playing in the opposition's uh, goal, that's for sure. So Emma's probably being smart. Garcia gets the decision this time. Ironic cheers from the 
United support. I'm not too sure it was a foul. I'll have to see again. I thought the initial one from Lauren James there, but that from Bjorn, I thought was a really good tackle. There's Anne Catherine Berger, not named in the squad today. And there's three goalkeepers, and only one can go. You know, on the bench is difficult. You've got three world class goalkeepers in the squad. And the Hamptons had to watch most of the season, certainly the first part of the season, from the stands and learn from you know these great goalkeepers she has around her. by Cuthbert. <laughs> Mark Skinner has never beaten Emma Hayes. It's going to take something pretty special for that run to change from here. Flag is up. Bolton. Nicely played. Blundell to create the space. And now Ladd, overload over on the far side. Riviere. United attempting to end the half strongly. Here's Garcia, back to Riviere. Zellum picks her head up. Garcia, awkward ball for her to control. Chase. Brilliant run. Chase, Garcia. Back in it, Haley Ladd. Excellent goal from United, and it could be a crucial one as well. 2-1. That's the sort of impact I was asking for before the start of the game from Jace. Does really well down the right-hand side to beat the defender. You can see here, really smooth with her, with her touches. Nice little nutmeg here on Guru, uh, sorry, it's Charles. And then the cut back to Garcia was beautiful. Really good block from Buchanan. But then Hayley Ladd is there to follow up. And, you know, no one expected United to get a goal back before the half. But how important this goal is going to be come the end of the game. You see there the little nutmeg on Charles. Fantastic block. And then Hayley Ladd's there to finish up. United make this game. A little bit more competitive. Real danger of this drifting away from them. And also committing more numbers forward. Which is something they've needed to do. There, there's been no real desire from this Man United team to get themselves in, you know, the Chelsea final third and make something happen. But Chelsea are now panicked and, you know, giving possession away, which is what I said would happen. Chelsea will give possession away and that will create chances for Man United. Flag stays down against Ella Toon. On to Golton. Again, Buchanan with a really good sliding challenge. Toon. Ladd, closed down. Riviere. Now Jace. Confidence back up now. Delivers. Good win by Ladd. Ladd goes down. No foul. Letitia under pressure from James. Much better from United. Well, they're sustaining pressure, aren't they? They're keeping it in the Chelsea half. Chelsea have got their backs against the wall here, having to defend crosses from Man United. And they're struggling to get out. Leah Golton claimed by Hannah Hampton.
Three minutes of stoppage time. Hannah does well here, she's taking it really well, but even the fact that she's still got the ball in her hand, just finding a bit of time for this Chelsea team. I was looking at, just before when uh, Golton went into the box, there was a slight pull from Lawrence and risky, risky defending. I was hoping there was going to be a replay of that because, you know, Golton could have probably gone down. Riviera up against Cuthbert. Abigail Byrne, let's play go on. Still two minutes of stoppage time to go. A bit of a cheap concession of a corner, not what United would have wanted this stage of the game. I think Beyond will be the target again for this delivery. If Guru Wright can get. A good delivery into the box. Beyond certainly will be that target. Brighton. It's a dangerous one. And it's wide. Free hit for Johanna Rieting Kanarid. She just rushed it. She had, she had more time. You'll see here. Really good delivery into the six yard box. Hard to defend, but. I felt like she had a little bit more time, even enough time maybe to take a touch. Kind of rid before she took the strike, but takes it first time and hits it over the crossbar. It's going to be feeling a little bit better, you suspect, going into the break. And that is half-time. Well, Chelsea started brilliantly, racing into a two-goal lead thanks to a double from Lauren James. It really threatened to run away from Manchester United, but Hayley Ladd has given them hope, striking just before half-time. And that goal, Farrah Williams, just gives this game a little bit of a different feel thanks to her. It does, and I think, you know, there was a slight break in play 15 minutes before the half, and I said there could be some really crucial instructions given from Mark Skinner, and there seemed to be, because there was a little bit of an injection of something. You started to see Jays get involved more in the game, and she was the player that then created the chance that, you know, has given Man United that goal that they will need going into the half. They can go in at half-time now, take a breath, listen to some instructions, and they certainly have to come out with a little bit more intensity in the second half if they are to get anything from it. United feeling much better. Chelsea now slightly more nervous than they would have been at the break at Stamford Bridge half time. Chelsea 2, Manchester United 1. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Farah. Well, the Chelsea fans still happy with what they're seeing from their team. Put on a show in the first half, but like Robin and Farah said, a little nervy now going in at half-time, Ellen. Yeah, I think if, if, if they'd gone in at 2-0, I think they would have been delighted with that performance. But I think now Man United are back in the game. They're very, very passive. Um, it was frustrating to watch, actually. I thought Chelsea, they'd come off the back of that disappointing, re not result, but performance against West Ham. And you could see that Emma Hayes had spoken to them, I reckon. <laughs> um, and I think that they really came out all guns blazing. And I thought there was going to be a lot more goals, but it was a really exciting encounter. But now Man United are back in it. It sh they should have been 3 or 4 nil up, yeah. Chelsea. The way that they carved Man United open in those opening 10, 15 minutes, they had numerous opportunities. It's like Manchester United had just got off the bus, forgotten to warm up and just come straight out onto the pitch. That was the pace that they were playing at. 
and uh, and Chelsea were the opposite. So United were lucky, but have done well to claw themselves back into it. I don't. Emma Hayes will be furious that they have opened, left the door open for United. Okay, well let's see how things got going here because just having been booed when she went to take a corner from the Manchester United fans, it was Lauren James that get, got on the score sheet, Ellen. Yeah, I think it all comes from this goal kick for, from Mary Earps and. That space is just massive, isn't it, that, that Chelsea can run into. And, and Callerid really exploited that space. And it's, Blundell gets out of possession because, position, sorry. United are in posi uh, possession from the goal kick. As soon as that switches, Hannah Blundell has to see where her players are, leaves that space open for Ritten Canarud, and she takes full advantage. In this first half, she has just eaten up grass after grass after grass, and then it's down to composure. Excellent from Guru Wrighton in a tight area, and then that little layoff from Ritten Canarud allows the goal. Great finish from Lauren James at a tight angle. A lovely finish, and I think, yeah, they've just got too much time in the box there, Chelsea. They were able to have pass after pass after pass, and then a lovely finish, and I love the celebration from Lauren James <laughs> right in front of those Manchester United fans. That's what you get for booing me. <laughs> That's what Lauren James said. But let's go to Manchester United because you said, well, actually, Mark Skinner said coming into this game, it's about us showing commitment and that desire. But they've been really passive, Rachel. They've been awful. And that first goal represented that in the box. There was no kind of sense of urgency, sense of, uh, you know, how dynamic they needed to be to get a last ditch block. And it was the same in midfield and, and all over the pitch for Manchester United. There was no sense of urgency to go and win that 1v1 battle. We talk about them being passive. Look how far... Um, Jays has dropped off, no pressure on the ball at all. Buchanan and Natalie Bjorn, that's all the time in the world. You know, at no point do they engage. And you see in a midfield matchup here, Katie Zellum has often been very, very deep, not been picking up players. And there's time for players, Chelsea players, to receive it. Erin Cuthbert on the ball here. Lloyd Paltz had so much time on the ball, time and time again, just drifts, ambles forwards 10, 15 yards. Look at the space that's then created, zero pressure, and it's only because Neve Charles couldn't pick a player out. And again, space on the edge of the box for a player like Erin Cuthbert. It's been a criminal display for Manchester United. What, would you, what do you need when you're in a team like Manchester United? Is that where you need leaders to step up and the communication to be like, this is not good enough, you need to go out and apply pressure? Well, what first, is it? First and foremost, how are you not up for this game? It's a must-win game for Manchester United and they should be coming out and flying tackles in. And we actually spoke that that first tackle, that first blow, was Aaron Cuthbert going through the captain, Katie Zellum at Manchester United. And I think that set the stall out. But yeah, you need leaders, you need people flying in tackles, big headers, re retaining possession. And I just haven't seen that. Yes, at the end of the half we have, but not throughout this first half. Yeah, well, certainly the Manchester United fans once again will not be happy with what they're seeing from their team today. Because, Rachel, going on from your point about allowing Chelsea players time on the ball, that's how they got their second goal. It was a sublime pass and assist from Bjorn, but she had all the time in the world to pick out a pass. It was exactly representative uh, of what we've been talking about. See there, how much space she has. And then out, it's this most simple of runs for Lauren James. The execution from Natalie Bjorn's excellent. We see here, no pressure on the ball, which that wouldn't have been allowed in your day, would it? No, as a number nine, that is criminal to allow a square pass to go to the other centre half. The ball is absolutely exquisite, but what I love from Lauren James is that she allows that ball to come over her shoulder, bounce, and then take that on the half volley is just an unbelievable technique. And I don't think Mary Upps could have done anything. She couldn't have come out for it. You see the cue of when Natalie Bjorn's about to play it. The defenders shoulder to shoulder Lauren James, we expect, and, and the, the distance of the ball to Lauren James is not very far. There's no chance for Mary Upps. She did the right thing standing and holding the ground. She'll be disappointed from front to back. It's been such a simple goal for Chelsea. And can I just say, I love how you said to Ellen then, Back in the day when you were playing, like you retired like 10 years, years ago. <laughs> it feels like that. <laughs> right, let's talk about this because actually, as we're talking about Manchester United, unbelievably, they are still in this game. They've done well to... They, they found a little period of a lull when Chelsea just sort of stepped off when Buchanan was messing around with it at the back, um, giving away simple possession. It's not been perfect from Chelsea in that respect. Farrah Williams talked about it in commentary, how frustrating that's been from a Chelsea point of view. And this is what it led to. You know, simple turnover of possession and not 
perfect, beautiful football, but Jay-Z does really well to square the ball back, find a player, and it's bundled in by Hayley Ladd. Hayley Ladd is a, a player who's been at United for a long time, and a player who would like to be that player to take the game by the scruff of the neck knows what it means to be a Manchester United player. So then they're going to need to dig deep. I wouldn't be surprised to see a player like Rachel Williams. I know she comes on as a sub regularly, but to come on earlier than we would have normally expected. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the bright spark has been Jay-Z for, for this, this first half for Manchester United, but Rachel Williams needs to, needs to come on this pitch. and. Throw in some tackles, I would say, and really get Manchester United firing up. Um, and I think that would really put the Chelsea defence on the back foot as well. OK, well, it was a big night here in West London on Monday night. Footballers are swapping their football kits for dresses and suits, as you can see right there. No surprise that Bob Matty, the Spanish midfielder, was the one to pick up Player of the Year. To go with her Ballon d'Or, our very own Mary Oates, one Goalkeeper of the Year, one of seven Lionesses to be named in the team of the year in England, Serena Wiegmann won coach of the year before agreeing a contract extension with the national team that will last until 2027. So another Euros and another World Cup. These two are celebrating. So you're both happy with that then? <laughs> in Serena we trust. <laughs> She's the best that the world wow. has to offer, in my opinion, from a tactical point of view, along with Iron as well. I think he's, he's instrumental in that duo. Um, but also from a, a player management point of view, she is, is leading the line. So, yeah, delighted to see her and another deal. <laughs> Ellen White, we've been on the sidelines applauding, cheering Serena Wiegmann, but you actually can give us some insight. You've been in the dressing room on the training pitch. What is she like? Why is this such an important contract extension for it's horrible, England? yeah. Uh, I can't believe she's staying. No, uh, <laughs> she's incredible. Uh, thankfully, no one's stealing her. That's the first thing. We've got her for a few more years. Her communication is unbelievable, both individually part of a team, a manager. She has empathy. She wants to get to know you as a person. Her tactical announce is unbelievable alongside Iron. Um, I just think she's a winner, a proven winner, and she sounds hungry. In her interviews, got unfinished business. She is hungry, and that's scary for, I think, the rest of the world, but exciting for the Lionesses. Unfinished business, we like that. OK, let's have a look what we've got coming up on BBC. Tonight, just a reminder, the women's football show, you can see that from quarter past 11. But over on the red button, you can catch it from 10 o'clock. And I must tell you to look out for Ellen's new podcast on Five Live Sports Football Daily Feed. It's called Women's Football Weekly, and the first episode is out this week, featuring Chelsea's Neve Charles and Scotland and Aston Villa captain. Rachel Corsi. Tell us a bit more about it then, Ellen. Thank you for the plug. I'm loving no it. No problem. <laughs> We're talking about women's here. football alongside Ben Haynes. Um, yeah, just all things women's football, WSL, Champions League. Um, yeah, I'm really excited and an honour to be part of this podcast. I just get to talk about football. It's amazing. So you just love it. <laughs> the best job in the world. OK, well, Arsenal had the chance to join Chelsea at the top of the table yesterday as they hosted Everton at Meadow Park. Commentary on this one comes from, comes from Joe Flemons. A lovely pass from McCabe. Here's Miedemar. Squares it looking for Russo. First touch is good. Beth Mead rattles the crossbar. Wonderful interchange. Two of England's leading lights latching on at the end. Here's Galley, although immediately swarmed and intercepted. Russo into Miedemar. Finnegan does well. Pearl over. Squares it. Surely 1 0, and it is 1 0. And it's Caitlin Ford. They swarmed on Everton as they tried to play out. And within three or four passes, a cut through the Everton back line. Lovely slide ball for a tap-in for Caitlin Ford. The break could be on for Everton. It's a lovely slide ball through. Katia Snewis is going to get the first. Snewis. Brilliant, brilliant counter-attacking move from Everton. They've had to be patient. They've had to wait. They've created something from nothing, really. It's a lovely slide ball through from Katarina Ollison. And it's a really, really good finish from Katja Snewis. Balti, deep delivery towards the far post. And it's headed in by Beth Mead. Drifted in at the far post, 
and then just cushions the header into the far corner. It's an excellent finish. Arsenal's patient approach finally opens up Everton. Fox. Long diagonal to Katie McCabe. Brave goalkeeping from Courtney Brosnan. Alessia Russo's not giving it up. Well defended by Finnegan. Long diagonal towards Blackstenius, who lets it run for Leonard Mornham. Blackstenius, Ford. Gobbled up in the end by Brosnan. Benison's delivery towards the near post, headed away. Only as far as Madsen. And then Stenovic stands up towards the far post. It's going to come out all the way. It's a good strike at goal, big deflection. OK, so two games so far this weekend. The other, Villa, Aston Villa, beating Leicester on Friday night. England striker Rachel Daly with the goal in that one. You've got three games later today. Brighton taking on Bristol City. Manchester City against Liverpool. Both of those in the top five. And West Ham taking on Tottenham tonight. OK, let's bring you some of the action that we've seen in the first half. The WSL is back. Here we go, high-stakes game. James! And it's Lauren James against her former club. Manchester United, they look a little bit of a yard off. Lovely ball over the top, it's James! Never in doubt. It's Charles! It's there! United back in it! OK, Rachel, we just saw Emma Hayes right there. What do you think she wants to see from her team in the second half? What she saw in the first 30, 35 minutes, which was intensity, it was a, a desire to crush this team to impose their game plan, and they did that so well. They eased off the gas, went back into sort of second and third ga uh, gear, and that's how Man United got back into the game. So more of how they start is how she wants them to finish. OK, it's time for us now to be good teammates and pass the ball back up to Farrah Williams and Robin Cowan. Thank you very much, Alex. It looks like Chelsea are going to make a change, it seems. So Kanuskin is stripped and ready to go. Once again, Chelsea, uncharacteristically today, lacking a bit of ruthlessness. But... Uh, no matter what happens, Manchester United cannot start the second half as they did the first, Farrow. No, they definitely can't. And Luskin is a, a player I just wrote down on my notes during the half that I was expecting Emma Hayes to bring in at some point. And obviously she's done it at the halfway point. But I'm hoping United come out of the blocks in the second half and give her this Chelsea team a game because they've been cruising for the first 45 minutes, or should I say 35. Give United their credit, they come back into it towards the end of the half. But I'm expecting a much better Man United team in the second half. Pressure on both, but Manchester United already playing catch-up. Desperately need a victory today, at least a positive result. They are starting today, four points off the top three. Oh, Nuskin. Perhaps a few cross wires. Jumper back on, no changes, it seems. She'll get her time. I've you know, put her name down as a marker of somebody that will come into the game for sure. Probably in the next 20 minutes, Robin. Emma Hayes, the queen of the mind game, has already outfoxed us <laughs> in the second half. Well, as always. We are not worthy. <laughs> so back underway then. And as you kept mentioning, Farrah, just a few lapses in concentration from Chelsea. I think that will be probably the main message, won't it? Keep your concentration, and this should take care of itself. Yeah, for sure. I think that, you know, has to have been a message from Emma Hayes at half-time. I think that, you know, they dominated, you know, the opening first half, they certainly dominated those 35 minutes, and it was just because of the concentration and, you know, sloppiness in possession that actually gifted United any sort of opportunities. 
Blundell making good progress. Out of play from Buchanan. And United have a player down, though. Ella Toon in a bit of discomfort. We'll see here, it just looks like, you know, feet, both feet got tangled. Lupos and Toon, a little scrape down the Achilles there uh, from Lupos. That's a painful it, one, yeah, no it, intent. Yeah, they ones for sure. <laughs> Toon not happy that she didn't get more of a decision there from referee Abigail Byrne. I don't think there was much in it. Well, of course, we can see there was clear contact, but not enough to uh, reward a free kick for Toon. Like most of her teammates has been in this game. Not with great frequency. Really unintentional from Leopold's. Mark Skinner in a small show of dissent that we saw in the break. A couple of fans voicing their opinion that they'd like him to be replaced. I'd ask Manchester United fans is who would you want him to replace with? You know, he's done a fantastic job at the club. Yes, they haven't had the start to the season they would have liked. They've had new players, they've lost big players, there's been rumour talks about players leaving. Those things become really difficult in a team when that happens. Expectations raised after a best ever season. Last time out, FA Cup final. Second place in the league. He had a fantastic season last year, there's no denying that, as you mentioned, getting to an FA Cup final, finishing in the top three to guarantee themselves a Champions League spot. You know, you're of course, your expectation with that, you know, increases, and, and Mark Skinner and the Man United players will know that. But are they aware of the pressures that come with that and then being able to perform with those pressures? You've seen, you know, players probably haven't been able to deal with that pressure and expectation. Because the, the group of players, Robin, are pretty much the same. There's a, you know, they, yes, they've got two huge players, in Badge and uh, Russo, but the, the rest of the pack are still the same players that were there last season. Garcia picks it up. Space opening up for Chase. Not the best ball to her. Buchanan. She makes me nervous, Buchanan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure sometimes she knows what she wants to do with the ball, but very composed, very, very composed player. Yeah, sometimes I think her casualness <laughs> gets the better of her. That's <laughs> winding up for the long ball. One by Charles, picked up by Cuthberts. Looks like another one down the Achilles there. Probably more intent in that from Hayley Ladd. Hayley Ladd, the goal scorer into the book. You can see Evan Cuthberts getting away from her. She scrapes down the Achilles there. Booking. First one of the day. Light and delivers. It's one by Buchanan, official, blocked off by Letitia.
routed through. Referee not happy with where Anna Blundell was going to take it. Chase into Blundell. Now Galton. Blundell. to Golton and the referee happy with that it seems they're not feeling like they're getting the rub of the green today Manchester United I mean I don't think there was much in it myself um, I'll have to have a look at the replay but it does look like it is one of those where you just you know come, there's a coming together but not to as I say would be worthy of any sort of free kick but United have looked better They've, you know the there's five minutes into the second half, you can see they're a little bit more sharper, a little bit more at the races, certainly got Hannah Blundell in higher positions and uh, being able to get beyond this Chelsea back line. Bolton collects. Jace. Lovely ball for Toon. This is a chance, it's Toon! Prevented. From taking a shot by a brilliant challenge from Lawrence. Golton to Garcia! Just wide, two big chances. Yeah, you're right, Robin. Huge chances there. I mean, the recovery from Lawrence here, she's beaten. You'll see she's beaten. To get that last ditch tackle just as Ella Toon's about to strike. A phenomenal tackle. And then the cross comes back in. And it's Garcia at the back post. You'll see it here. Golden gets the ball, recovers the ball. Really good delivery to the back post. Charles can't see Garcia behind her. And the header towards goal was just wide at the post, but. Yeah, I said Man United have come out a little bit brighter already in his opening five minutes of the second half. So chances you feel against Chelsea need to be taken. I feel like it could be Lauren James, is, you know, is carrying a knock. She doesn't seem as on it in this second half. It's about, it'd be interesting to see if she's a player that was going to be removed uh, at the half. Here's Charles. Lawrence with a goal-saving challenge, potentially. Flag is up for offside. If she got that wrong, I was going to say Ashley Lawrence, that could have ended in a penalty. And a change for Chelsea. Shurka Nuskin coming on, and Mia Fischel withdrawn. Mm, interesting one, so it wasn't uh, Lauren James, I thought she was... You know, limping around, but it looked like Lauren James were going to that number nine position. I actually think Fischl's had a really good 50 minutes. I think, you know, the contribution she's given to this Chelsea team, I think she gives them a different dynamic in terms of the way that they can play with her in the team. Yes, she didn't get on the score sheet, but I think her overall performance for 50 minutes has been uh, very good. So, Lauren James, the furthest forward, something that didn't really work too well against West Ham. Very different game, we should say. Something that Emma Hayes clearly wants to continue to try, at least. I think if Lauren James plays as a lone nine, I think she needs players that are prepared to run beyond her. Lauren James's strength isn't running in behind, it's more coming to feet and creating in front of defenders. So if she is to go in at number nine, she certainly needs players around her that are going to go beyond her. James pulling out wide now. I'll get around Riviere, gets the cross in. Away by Turner, Nuskin. That was Leupold who took aim there. Jace rides the challenge. Garcia can't quite keep that in. I think how they might see that role for Lauren James is that she gets the freedom to float along, you know, that front line as opposed to being restricted to the central areas because we've just seen there when she gets it in those wide areas, she can cause problems with really good delivery in from Lauren James. Nuskin does really well. Pass towards Kanner, it is cut out. Bolton, strong run. Finds Blundell. Chase. Now two. Riviere supports on the far side with Garcia. Riviere balloons that. 
I think what doesn't mean the poor delivery there from Riviere, but what surprises me with this Chelsea team in the absence of Sam Kerr and Millie Bright, you have an experience you have to see here, the, the recovery defending from Lawrence does really well and Golden. Get, look at that last ditch tackle there. I'm saying any missed time there. It's a penalty and you're in trouble, but does really well. But I, I was going I was going to the point, really bright, senior player, Sam Kerr, senior player, Frank Kirby. Bolton with the centre. Chelsea nearly playing themselves into trouble, but they might play themselves out of it and get an opportunity here. Yeah, Frank Kirby, a senior player, who we believe is fully fit now and able to play. And in a game like this, you know, for me, should be introduced or should be starting. There's got, you know, is there something, is there a problem there or does Emma Hayes just not see her as somebody that can replace those and have the impact that she used to have in this Chelsea team? But certainly a player for me that, you know, fully fit, they have to find a position for her to play in the starting eleven. Seven. Finds two. Need to find a lad. Garcia gives chase, but it's going to be Hannah Hampton's ball. Kirby there and into the final few months of her contract as well. Runs out in the summer. Just wonder the players in that sort of position with Emma Hayes going as well. Just slightly complicates things. So don't know who's going to be in charge at the start of next season. Yeah, this is true, but for a player that has, you know, given much of her career to this Chelsea team and a Chelsea favourite and the quality, you know, when is when is fit and the impact she can have on this team when she's fit. One is deserving of another contract, but two is a player that you, you would introduce into the game. One back well by United. Garcia is played in. It's Garcia. Toon. Red. Saved by Hampton. Superb goalkeeping. They just too, took a little too much time there, United. Bolton having their best spell of the match United. Toon. Bolton. Oh, Blundell. Big chance for Man United. Big, big chance to get himself level in the game. We'll see it here. Awful defending by Chelsea. Bjorn's left 1v1 with Garcia. Garcia takes maybe too much time. Bjorn does actually really well to just put her off. And then the cutback from Garcia just wasn't good enough. But this from Hannah Hampton, you know, diving at the feet of ha Hayley Ladd to make it really difficult and get the block in. And then Chelsea were able to defend well. Falls here nicely to Ladd, who just scored the, you know, the goal to get them back into the game. But Hampton does really well to throw herself at the feet of her Ladd to stop that going in. James. Letizia. Trying to prevent her from getting a shot on goal, but James will, of course, she does. It's James turned aside this time. She's so good at doing that. She's such a you know fantastic player. She gets you thinking that there's nothing on, and all of a sudden you'll see her here, shaping up, shaping up, goes inside, looks as if she's got nowhere to go, and cuts you back. And the balance of this player, the balance is phenomenal. And then obviously gets herself a, a, a teammate to corner here, but the way she just cuts back onto her left foot. Fantastic balance. Oops. Saving from her this time prevents her England teammate from securing the hat trick. Hour gone. Here comes the corner. It's not a bad one. What's the decision? Goal kick. Not sure anybody knew was that a goal kick or a corner. Uh, Kay Zellum seems to be holding her head, so could it have been her that had the last contact? Will the United pay for those missed chances? That's the question. Yeah, definite goal kick. Good decision by the referee, actually, in the end. Headed on to low pulse and out for a goal kick. 
I think so. I think Chelsea, you've seen how Man United have come out. They wouldn't know. Man United could only have got better, which they have done. For Chelsea, they needed to take advantage of, you know, United's poor start and probably got more goals. Jace with a run into the box. Trying to pick out Toon. Just too many blue shirts around. As she started to find her feet now. Sluggish start from the Brazilian. But she's now doing what she does best. Blundell, lovely play. Golson. Read by Kanarit. Finds Lawrence. Well, it's opening up for Ashley Lawrence here. I think Emma Hayes made that change too early in, in official coming off. She's somebody that can release pressure because she can hold up play. So just put uh, United got in, in behind there. But she could have held up play. So in these moments when Emma would have known momentum will shift, she, she knew that there needed to be a reaction from Manchester United. There has been. And now they can't seem to get away from the pressure and get out of their half, Chelsea. Here goes Lauren James. Goes around the outside. Good defending from Zellum. Blocks off the shot. Now Charles. Brighton, back to Neve Charles. Good tracking. My Haley lads, Zellum. Oh, Galton, bit of a tired ball that. Galton does really well to rectify the situation. Oh, she's given it away. Kanderid. Here's Lerpols. Oh, it's an effort. Improvisation from uh, right in there. Looked like it was behind her as the, as the delivery came in from low pulse. We thought you could hear the crowd shouting for shoot to get to delivery, and yeah, it's behind her and outside of the right foot and tries to hook it towards goal. See here, it actually comes off of her shin in the end. It looked from, from where we're stood, Robin, it looked far better than it was on the replay. <laughs> Pauls picks it up. Chelsea now starting to find their rhythm again. Canarid. Off Turner for a corner. Canarid does well. She's done well all afternoon getting those little combinations, you know, beyond Hannah Blundell to get deliveries into the box. The only problem is with Lauren James playing in the line, she's never in between the sticks where she needs to be for those deliveries that are coming in. Here is James. Superb delivery. Brilliant save from Mary Earps. Goal kick. That was a great head around the back. It was a, a really good delivery in from Lauren James. And it was Bjorn, actually, that got herself around the back post. You'll see it here. Really good, deep delivery from Lauren James. Bjorn heads back towards goal. I think it was saved by the post there. We'll see again here, really good header. Yep, the post saves Manchester United. And then it goes out off Charles for a goal kick. Just wonder if Mark Skinner might think about some changes. Just a few looking a little tired now. Hannah Hampton has gone down for Chelsea. So this will be a enforced break. An interesting one. Normally when this happens, the team will go to the sideline. It doesn't look as if it's a, a tactical one for Mimma Hayes. Could have take, taken the glove off. Yeah, it could have come from the set of the block that she come out when she smothered the feet of Haley Ladd, maybe. Well, this is serious. This would be a massive shame. She's been superb this afternoon. A mentally confident character, Hannah Hampton, will be wrestling with Mary Earps for the England shirts. There might be some time before 
Herbst relieves that, but um, she's certainly has, pushing her. She is, and she has great potential. We know that. I think you know, goalkeeping coaches, their teammates will tell you the potential is there. But there's also something that isn't there with her, and that's why she doesn't get a consistent run of games. You know, it's certainly not in this Chelsea team. But I think under the guidance of Emma Hayes, I think can really improve her, not you know, not her ability because I don't think that's the problem. Maybe her all round, maybe leadership or off skill or off pitch skills that probably can help her go to that next level. But it won't be long before she is pushing Mary Earps for that England shirt if she gets a run of games in this Chelsea team. Here's the save that she does. Doesn't seem to have affected her hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's okay to stay on for now. Play continues. Blundell, Jace, goes down quickly, Buchanan, oh, we've seen most every side to Jace's game today. <laughs> We have. She's a player with bags of talent. It's, it's how you keep her in the game for longer spells, and then obviously how can you know the, the talent she has? How can you convert that into actually having a real impact in this team? And what I mean by that is more goals and assists because she doesn't have enough for an attacking player in a top team like Manchester United. United fans implying that uh, Anna Hampton's break wasn't exactly uh, one that needed to happen. Toon trying to play it out for Garcia, but the flag is up. Offside, free kick for Chelsea. And it looks like changes are coming for Manchester United. Nikita Paris ready to come on. Lucia Garcia is off. And Hayley Ladd, who scored the goal to get United back into this, is off. And Lisa Nalsson is on in her place. The key is a change I think was needed and probably could have come a little bit earlier. She'll inject certainly some energy into this team. You'll see already she'll, she'll, she'll like to join in and advance in, in terms of that press from Man United and you know, could cause Chelsea some problems in that. United have won it back high up the pitch fairly regularly in the second half. 20 minutes still to go, just over. with the up and under. Well, see it in the lads. Up of the pitch. Thankfully for them, managed to bypass their fans on the way. Yeah, I've actually, I actually think Lad had a really good game. Interesting uh, change with that one. Garcia couldn't work herself into the game. Bolton, cleared up by Buchanan. I'm sure the longer the game stays like this, it won't be long before we see Rachel Williams come onto the pitch for Man United. We've seen what she could do, late winners, late equalisers. A terrific goal scorer for Man United. Always had that up their sleeve, United. Nalsson. Leg. 
That stayed in, but Toon is offside. No, she's not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Lawrence went to take a throw in, so that shows, you know, how, how much he was an offside in that in that scenario. Lighten's header. Ooh, the two defenders got in each other's way there. Away by Blondell, only as far as Cuthbert. It's James, shut down by Riviere. Superb challenge. James still on the deck. Canarid. Houston can't keep hold of it. Turner brings it away. Harris. Oh, just stood on the ball. Great challenge from Zeller. Jace trying to get in behind and is pulled up for the foul on Charles. Silly foul, silly foul to give away when you've got Charles facing her own goal here. Look, they're in a battle. Don't need to do that. Can keep the pressure on from behind and you know get her teammates to up around her. Jace doesn't need to foul Charles there. Here's the chance for Robin James on the outside. Does really well. Riviere, she does really well to get the block in there. I think you see Robin goes down with a little bit of cramp. Initially, I thought it could be the knee, but a little bit of cramp for Robin. Robin James. Cuthbert does so well to shield the ball. Placing Canarid. Those little give and goes are like trademark, <laughs> trademarked. Uh, is it for um, Canarid? Sorry, down this right hand side. She's done it all afternoon. But again, the delivery across the box from Canarid, beautiful into a danger area between the six-yard box and the penalty spot, and they've no number nine there to just tuck it away. James. Tissier sticks out a leg. Here's Paris. Nelson. Well, she's managed to squeeze her way in between two Chelsea players. Golton. Now Jace. Oh, onto Paris, but just behind her. Blundell still full of running. She must be one of the fittest players in this league. She is. I think it's one of her, you know, a huge attribute of hers. She's very athletic, can get up and down. One of these wide areas. Ooh, oh, again. Golton falls nicely for her. Golton is in. Down she goes. No penalty. Well, that is a big call. Big, big call from Abigail Byrne. Well, the referee's in a good position. I'd love to see the replay from where I was stood. I thought she was lucky to earn Lawrence to get away with this. But let's see as it goes in here. Yeah, nothing in here. I think that, you know, great decision there from the referee. I think Golden's trying to buy a penalty here. Lawrence, not much in it. Certainly not enough to give the penalty. And if the game did have VAR, they wouldn't overturn that decision from the ref. Well, that was a close call, but it seemed like it was the right one. Quite sure who's been given the I think yellow there. Nikita Paris, yeah. Bit of frustration. Probably four. They should have had a penalty. Nikita's the type of player that you, you know would really get frustrated by those decisions.
Roger Williams getting ready for a late, late show once again. Not what Chelsea defenders want to see, you know, in this last 15 minutes of the game. Well, apparently it was uh, yellow card for Aaron Cuthbert who uh, said something untoward. Here comes the change for Chelsea. Kadisha Buchanan off. And Jess Carter on. Before today, she'd play every single minute in the WSL this season. It was a strange one for me when I saw the team sheet with Alcott's name on it. You know, said that the way she performed in this Chelsea team is phenomenal. So it was a, a bit of a shock that she, she didn't start this game, but I think Emma would have brought her into the game now. They need a steady head at the back and somebody that can lead. And she's, a, you know, she's grown into a really good leader for somebody so young. Turner clears. Still time. For Manchester United to get something out of this. Still time for Chelsea to wrap it up. Good play from Nelson. Blundell. Toon. Just sells Blundell a little short, but turn on hand. On to Blundell. Challenged by Canarid, a free kick for United. I mean, you can see Mark Skinner complaining. I understand that they've been given the free kick. Some free kicks don't always have to be you know, followed, be followed by, a, you know, a yellow card or a caution. So for me, it was a foul, yes, the free kick's been given, there should be no complaints. It's not persistent, persistent fouling from a kind of, a, you know, they're both challenging for a ball, she gets cut back in and her leg's just dangling. Zellum towards Turner, away by Charles. Looks clear. This is a potentially decisive moment, but you feel, Farah, that referee got it spot on. Yeah, for me, nothing can it. I think not even a coming together that, that could have, you know, been given as a penalty. So, as you can see, Lawrence saying here, I didn't touch you. I believe, you know, from the replay, she doesn't. And as I said, if VAR was in the game, which I'm sure we'll hear the managers after the game say if VAR was there, would have got overturned. They wouldn't have overturned that referee's decision. It was spot on. Houston. Back to Canarid. Too close to Erks. Tries to get things going quickly. Nelson to Paris. And here she comes. So many times the super sub, Rachel Williams on for Ella Toon. Interesting, sacrificing the midfielder for a, for a striker. You know, they are going for it, Mark Skinner, you can see here, Ella Toon coming out and Rachel Williams coming in, but she'll certainly put the pressure on this Chelsea back line in this last 10 minutes of the game. Six goals this season, four in the WSL, all off the bench. James. Helping on to Wrighton. Oh, it's 
a good pass on Rachel Williams and Cuthbert. And eventually, the referee's given it Chelsea's way. So strong, so tenacious, Evan Cuthbert, you know, a player that I really enjoy watching. See, there goes into a physical battle with Rachel Williams. Not many would choose to do that. Comes out on top, does well here, and you can see Nakia comes wrong side, and you'll see here gets the better of Rachel Williams, and then Nakia Paris isn't having any of that and just shoves into her. So, yeah, it's a free kick in a dangerous area for Chelsea. A wee foul on the wee Scott. Something like that I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to say. To the final ten, then. Brighton. Way by Paris. Corner kick. No, like a set piece that would have come off the training ground in terms of the position they started, but it just wasn't executed well. You can see here they check back in, just caught up, but the delivery just wasn't good enough. Easy for Man United to defend, the key gets a double block. And then there's a corner for Chelsea. Brighton again with a delivery. Away by Williams. upfield by Zellum. Bjorn. Set up Chelsea's second goal. The ball just like that. Shove on Rivier. Again, you know, Brighton doesn't need to do that. Rivier's going to know with the ball, put it into an area. And get a team up the pitch. Well, this is the incident that got Nikita Paris booked. So she is on a booking as well. James creating the space, finding Kaderid. Loose good is offside. They do well, Chelsea, to get it out through the switch. Uh, you know, Lauren James switches it out, but Loose can just run herself offside and should have been more patient in a. You know, their movement forward. Oh, it's fallen nicely here for Lauren James. Can she rubber stamp this victory? Of course she can. Lauren James with another Stamford Bridge hat trick to confirm victory for Chelsea. Goal for Chelsea, the hat trick for number 10. It is just too simple. I don't know, another player that turns up at Stamford Bridge and scores the amount of goals that she does. Back to back hat tricks in the WSL when Chelsea have played at Stamford Bridge. Hasn't been in the game in this second half as much as she probably would have liked to or like she impact the first half. But you give Lauren James a chance, you let her go 1v1 with your goalkeeper. You can see here, not involved, doesn't want the ball, and all of a sudden it comes to her. She eats up the ground, the Tissier can't get near her, and then the composure to just slot it past Mary Earps into the bottom corner. She does really well, no defenders catching Lauren James in these areas. Takes it offline, takes it off angle, gives herself an opportunity to open the goal up. You'll see here, she's dribbling on a straight line and she just nudges it to the left, allows her to open up the goal and slot it home with her left foot. And it's a hat-trick for Lauren James. Calm, composed, clinical. Lauren James. And I love this with the fans, Robin. Lauren James celebrating with the fans, they would have loved that moment. 
Here's Rachel Williams. Long way back now for Manchester United with just four minutes of normal time remaining. Blundell. Teasing ball in and Hampson came and didn't get much on it. Well, according to the referee, she got nothing on it. You saw the sneaky look there from Hampton. She knows she got a touch on it, but Hampton doesn't need to get involved in this. This is a delivery that goalkeeper, you know, certainly Hannah Hampton doesn't need to come and try and make any contact. Delivery was long. Let your defenders defend. She ain't going to collect it. It's gone beyond her. She was lucky to get away with that one because she did actually give the corner away. Familiar feeling for Manchester United, it seems. Your poles down. Right. Knees. Bit of discomfort. Oh, the ankle. You can see it's a, it's a ghost from grass. I think it's the Fuji on the side. You know, the, the level of the pitch there. She's probably just rolled it slightly on there. James attempted the back heel. If we are to have a wider discussion about James Farrell, we were at the Emirates when they lost heavily to Arsenal. She didn't have a good game and she also perhaps could have been sent off. Need more days like this than, than those. Well, she showed today, you know, what she can deliver, and it's something that, you know, I'm sure Emma Hayes and Lauren James herself is working on more of that consistency in their performances. and. Know, when the game's when she's not able to get herself involved in the game, how can she get herself involved? And their learning curve, she's a young player. Obviously with great potential, she's been replaced now by Frank Kirby and you know somebody, another unbelievable talent, long time out of the game. Somebody should have been introduced, Robin, a little bit earlier in my opinion. I've just done. James receives her standing ovation. This is her manner. She certainly enjoys being here, that's for sure. Well, she spoke last time, post-Liverpool, post her hat-trick, that she was doing it all for Emma Hayes. As we mentioned, a huge motivation and more responsibility as well now on Lauren James' shoulders without Sam Kerr. It will be, we forget she's still young, she's still in that development phase of her game. You know, obviously advanced more than other girls around her age, but the talent is unquestionable. And it's other stuff that she can work on, and she's aware of that, and, and Emma Hayes is, and she's in good guidance. You know, a good family as well. You know, her dad, Nigel, you, you know, how we use with her. She's got great people around her. So strong. Erin Cuthbert trying to match her. And where does this leave Manchester United? Farah, it's been a good performance in patches today, but that's all it's been. And that's all it's been all season. In most of their games, they have good spells. It's not consistent enough, you know, the period of time that they perform in 90 minutes isn't long enough, you know, to give themselves opportunities. But they're 10 points behind now. They'll be 10 points behind after this game, um, Chelsea. So, you know, that gap in terms of, you know, trying to compete with Chelsea for the league, in my opinion, is too far-fetched. And at 2-1, they had opportunities. Big opportunities. They've got one here to try and get a goal before the end of the game. Seven minutes added. If it's going to come, it's going to have to come soon. Zellum towards the back post and Paris gets the flick on away by Carter. Paris there again. Corner kick.
have Rachel Williams in the middle now. And that's where the target is. Bit of a mess in there. Oh, Jace. What a bad effort. It's a great effort. When you've got players like Rachel Williams on the pitch, you know, from set pieces, you give yourself a chance. And this is a really good delivery in from Zellum. Straight onto the head of Rachel Williams. And it's blocked by her own teammate, Golden. It was on target. And then Jace follows up with a. The clearance here, it comes out, it comes out to Jace. She, you know, she hits it back in, but doesn't do anything to Hannah Hampton in the Chelsea goal. Brighton giving chase here. Here's Zellum. Cuthbert, dispossessed by Williams. On to Golton. Nelson. Oh. Not an easy chance that, no backlift. No, it wasn't, and I don't think Hampton in the Chelsea goal was expecting that to come at her. You just see this save here, no back lift, toe punt, it looked like toe punt punted out. You know, really good strike towards goal, but Hannah Hampton certainly wasn't expecting that and made, it, made a bit of it. <laughs> she definitely did. Enjoying the BBC cameras being here, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nelson. Charles stepping in. Canner in. Into Kirby. As we approach the final few minutes of stoppage time. Past was in the balance, your player of the match. Farrah. You know, it was a difficult one until Lauren James got out hatchet. Evan Evan Copper has been phenomenal for me. I think you know she's in, in, the, in that midfield area, in terms of in possession, out of possession, has been really aggressive. What Chelsea needed. Kirby delayed the shots, and Nuskin It's a wild one in the end. Yeah, I was saying Evan Cup it would have been my choice of player of the match, but with Lauren James getting that hat trick, the way she, you know, has finished the game off, it couldn't have gone to another player other than her. <laughs> another hat trick, another prayer of the match for Lauren James. That was a big chance, by the way, for uh, Frank Kirby. She took a whack in the face, but it comes back into her. She has a big opportunity to put, put it away there. The late change for Manchester United. Hannah Blundell off and Gemma Evans on. The substitute appearance for Evans. Chase picks it up. <laughs> Chance for Frank Kirby. It was big, wasn't it? You see here, she gets a whack in the face there from Mary Letizia, but. So what comes from there, she gets herself back into play and has the opportunity to go. Didn't quite see it there on the replay. But that was a poten that potentially she's asking for a penalty there. <laughs> Bolton in behind. Just bypasses Williams. Riviere back in. And that's Hampton's. She might have landed awkwardly on Hampton. Uh, 
Mark Skinner continue to have to answer questions about his side's form back to back WSL defeats now after the defeat to Liverpool just before the break three defeats in their last five in the WSL Anticipating. Stadium play. Stadium play went out the other side of the pitch and Charles is coming out of it. Here's Kirby. Canarid. First win in a row at home in the WSL. A remarkable record. And it's skewed wide. Seven minutes of time have elapsed. And there we have it, another hurdle cleared in the race for the title for Chelsea. This match in the balance for some time in the second half. But another hat-trick, a second in a row at Stamford Bridge in the WSL for Lauren James. Means they go back three points clear at the top of the WSL. Making light once again of another bit of adversity. The loss of Sam Kerr, they just keep going. Manchester United now 10 points off the top of the WSL. And will be aiming for Champions League football, but even that might be beyond Mark Skinner and Manchester United now. Big result, a lot of consequences on this one, Farrah. Yeah, I think Mark's going to do that. You can see him there. He's not too happy with the officials there at the end of the game. But I don't think there's any complaints. I don't think his team turned up. You know, they left it until the second half or late on in the first half to try and get themselves back into it. I think Chelsea were the better team over the 90 minutes. We saw what Man United could do in glimpses, but it just wasn't enough over 90. So I think Mark needs to take a look at his players as well because, you know, yes, they had a response in the second half, but that response was needed at the kickoff. They left it too late, so yeah, it's a big win for Chelsea. And how this impacts Man United being 10 points behind Chelsea is huge. Another box tick then. Chelsea on their way once again. The champions have beaten Manchester United are here at Stamford Bridge by three goals to one. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Farah. Yes, over 20,000 in the bridge here. And Chelsea putting on a show for them, getting the job done. And then were you impressed with the reigning champions today? I was in the first half. They took a little bit of their, their foot off the gas second half, but then Man United did come really firing in that second half. But Lauren James, what a player. She completely put it to bed um, in, the, in the last kind of 10, 15 minutes. So, uh, yeah, overall, I think Chelsea will be delighted with that three points. I think they showed why everyone's talking about them getting a another championship, another WSL championship this season, because even though they didn't have it all their own way in the second half, they got the job done. They found different ways of doing it. Lauren James is that little bit of magic that you need. Um, she was consistent. The way she played and the position she played was, was varied, and that's difficult to deal with from a Manchester United perspective. But as Ellen said, Manchester United just did not show up. Chelsea did on the big stage and uh, got himself another step closer to winning another title. Yeah, Emma Hayes calling in her team, her coaching staff there. Hopefully she'll come over and join us very soon. Let's have a quick look 
at how things stand in the WSL. Chelsea remain at top of the table with 28 points. 10 clear now of Manchester United. Looks like it's going to be an uphill struggle for them now. Do you think it's game over for them, Ellen? Poten uh, well, I think so. Unless they have a flawless rest of the season and the, the other three go on and lose most of their games, it's going to be very, very hard for them to even reach those Champions League spots, let alone win the title. I think they'll be bitterly disappointed not to have come away or put up a better fight um, because they needed those three points. What's the biggest frustration, do you think? We've seen banners, we've Skinner out, but what is the frustration? The frustration is, is that the way United start the second half and the problems that they caused them and ultimately getting a goal back and getting a foothold back into the game, we saw none of that in the first half. The first half, they were so apathetic. They were, there was no intensity. There was no desire to want to go out and even compete. They could have been three, four nil down at half time. And if a manager's not getting that fire out of a team, I think that's probably the frustration with that with fans. Is it always hard though when you lose such star players to try and to try and rebuild and go again? They've had time to do that and galvanising a team and getting a, a desire and a performance and an energy and an effort out of a team is not something that comes with losing big players. Okay, well actually let's get over to Joe Curry right now. It's with the player of the match, Lauren James. Well, Lauren, I can see you waving at the fans there. A big win at the bridge, a hat-trick for yourself against the title rivals. How do you sum up an afternoon like today? It's always tough playing against Man United, but I mean, with the fans behind us at Stamford Bridge, we love playing here. And yeah, I think our performance from the start today, you know, every, you could tell everyone was up for it. And, you talk about being up for it. What is it about you and playing here that brings out the best in you? I really don't know the answer to that. I, re I just love scoring and yeah, I try to do that as much as possible to help the team win. The United fans were giving you a little bit of grief before that first goal and then you got to go and celebrate it in front of them. How much did you enjoy silencing the United fans today? Yeah, for sure. But I think for me, it's just about focusing on what I can do and silencing anyone who's hating as well. Um, so yeah, i just got to focus on myself and focus on the helping the team. LJ, you are one cool cookie. You're the Barclays player of the match. Congratulations. Thank you. It's always nice to see Lauren James smiling. To go on and get a hat-trick once again here at Stamford Bridge in front of the fans, a player that once again we're seeing the maturity that she continues to develop on and off the field, Ellen. I think she's just a phenomenal talent and scoring back-to-back -back hat tricks at Stamford Bridge is unbelievable. And making it look easy. Oh, it's just unbelievable. The way that her finesse, the way she moves the ball, the way that she she's led this team. Um, I, th I think she's really come into her own and I think for me, it's just her calmness in the way that she approaches the game and scoring goals. And, and this goal, you know, it's, it's beautiful play. A lot, a lot of time, too much time, if anything, in the, in the Manchester United box. But the way she strokes that into the back of the net and our unselfish play for, from Kenrid there as well, just to set it off to Lauren James. It's her ability to read the play and just to hang out on that back post, see where the space is in a congested tight area. You know, that's the maturity for me that is most impressive, a reading of the game. See here, she gets in between two defenders and makes this look so, so simple. It's just the way she allows the, the, the ball to come across her shoulder, let it bounce and then take that on the, on the half volley is just superb and something which I don't think you can teach either. And again, a, a, this third goal came from another goal kick for, from Manchester United, but the way she drove at the defenders and then just that finish is really lovely and she actually takes the ball a little bit to her, her left to really kind of give the eyes to Mary and then slot that in, but, but a perfect goal. Yeah, Chelsea's top goal scorer in the WSL this season. And actually, we've got someone alongside us right now that can tell us a bit more about Lauren James. Happy with her performance today, Emma? I am, I really am. I thought the front two, front, they, they, led, they led the way for the team. And um, I thought she was impressive both sides of the ball. Emma, can you tell us a bit more about Lauren? Obviously, she went through a lot before yeah. Christmas with the abuse she was receiving online and the maturity that you're having to work with her on and off the field. Yeah, listen, human beings are not simple. Um, there's a lot of complexities involved with Lauren, but 
she's a genius footballer and I'm happy for her. I think she wanted to demonstrate in front of the home fans she could step forward. She shows she can do it as a 10, a 9 in the second half. Her hold-up play is unbelievable, it really uh, is. Emma, I know you're always a manager striving for more, a huge three points today, yeah. but how happy, or if not, with the performance today for your team? I thought we were superb, first half particularly. Listen, I made brave decisions today, especially starting at the back, and I think it paid off. And we want to keep evolving as a team, and I, I said it to Paul Green before the game, I can't help it, I don't make safe choices. Well, no matter what, I will leave the team in the best place possible, and I want to keep developing the young players. Well, tell us a bit more about that, Emma, because you said that you're going to have a role with who walks through the door to replace you. Where are you with that at the moment? Well, Paul Green's leading that search. It's him that sort of shortlisted everyone along with the sporting directors. They've asked my opinion, but I think it's important they make that decision because I don't want someone ringing me up in a couple of years <laughs> saying it was me that made it. No, the club have to make that decision. I have no doubt they will select the right person. Um, no one's ever um, called you predictable or boring, so we appreciate Thanks. that. That's Thanks for that. Um, with regards to a lot of talk about number nine, Sam Kerr being out, the answer of do you need a number nine? Was that there today for everyone to see? Yeah, of course. But. You know, you have to. Everybody has to take their turns in that. Um, you know, Lauren took that today. I think for the team, there's other moments. Mia came on last week. There was a lot of young players out there that had to take shoulder a lot of responsibility as the champions. I thought they were under pressure, but they handled it superbly. I mean, the goal before half time, completely against the runner play, is going to make it a game. I think we deserve to win the game. Emma, just one quick one before I let you go. Yeah. Wednesday night, a huge one here in the Champions yeah. League. How badly do you want to get your hands on that trophy before you leave? Uh, Al, you know, we had the, the most incredible team in 2006 and winning the quadruple as an assistant coach at Arsenal was one of my proudest achievements. I'm not governed by the fact that we need... I'd love to do it with this football club, but I proudly possess a winner's medal, thanks. OK, thanks for joining Good us, Emma. Well. well done for thanks, today. Guys, Here, I'll take that from you. <laughs> See you later. OK, you two, thank you so much for joining me today. Always a pleasure. Just a reminder, you can catch all the highlights from what's going on today in the WSL on the Women's Football Show on BBC One at quarter past 11 tonight at an earlier time on the BBC Red Button from 10 o'clock. We'll see you next week. Here we go, high stakes game. James, 1-0, and it's Lauren James. Lovely ball over the top, it's James!